So the Super Reviews continue with this 4080 Super. And ASUS sent us the ASUS ROG Strix Gaming 4080 Super OC Edition. So of course, we'll be reviewing it, we'll be testing games, we'll be benchmarking it. All to know if this is the GPU for you. I'm Rocky the Programmer and this is the ASUS ROG Strix Gaming 4080 Super OC Edition Review. So for our standard disclaimer, ASUS did send us this review unit, but they do not have a say on the verdict of the review. So as mentioned, the Super variants are back here at the 4000 series of GPUs from NVIDIA, and we've actually previously reviewed the 4070 Super. To date, they've released the 4070 Super, the 4070 Ti Super, and now what we're gonna review today is the 4080 Super. And also as mentioned in that review, the Super variants are a slight performance upgrade over the base versions. And here in this case, it's mostly true, but there is an emphasis on the slight. We'll talk about that more in a bit. So for those expecting a 4070 Super level of upgrade in terms of performance, they might be slightly disappointed with this release. So for that previous review, we had the ASUS Dual model of the 4070 Super, which is their very basic, their most low-end model. And for this, <laughs> we actually have their almost flagship level of GPU with the ROG Strix Gaming. We'll get into that in a little bit. Let's talk about first the chipset, the 4080 Super. Specs-wise, it's very similar to the 4080 base model, which is around a 5% upgrade in specs. It still uses the same memory bus with the same memory capacity, and also the same power draw, with a very slight difference in the core configuration. So theoretically, this would mean around 5% increase in terms of performance at the same power usage. This is where kind of the disappointment should set in, but with this comes a very decent price cut, at least in the MSRP in the United States. <laughs> of course, dito sa Pilipinas, baka ibang usapan yun. But mostly, those changes in prices would slightly reflect here in our country. The way I see it and the way other YouTube reviewers see it, this 4080 Super is not so much as a super upgrade, but rather a refresh of the 4080 with that said decent price cut. So speaking about the card itself, it's actually right here behind me. We've had our first impressions, first unboxing of the GPU in a separate video. And from there, we've listed the ASUS specific features. But some of the most noteworthy features here is the Axial Tech fans, which I'm happy to report that it functions as advertised. We'll get there when we see the benchmark results for the games. Another feature here that is honestly impressive is the 0 dB technology for the fans. While idle or when you're not gaming, or even when you're playing not so demanding games, I remember I remember I was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1440p. The fans barely made any noise. And in my setup, I'm in a very small and very quiet room. So any noise coming from the radiators, the fans, the GPUs, they would get very annoying fast. And luckily, I didn't have that issue with the ROG 4080 Super. Actually, even when gaming at 4K, when I was doing the gaming tests, the fans didn't make that much noise. They did ramp up to maintain really decent temperatures, but it didn't get to the point where they were annoying or intrusive. Of course, this wouldn't be ROG without the RGB. And this GPU has multiple points of it. There's one on the side and the signature, I would say end cap or boot that kind of frames the outside of it, all controllable via software. Speaking of that end cap, there are two headers there that you can use to control the fan curves of the rest of your case fans using the GPU temperature. Most out-of-the-box solutions for fan curves use the CPU temperature. With this, you can use the GPU temperature, which is a little more sensitive when gaming. And finally, we've gushed over this at our first impressions video, but this GPU features a die-cast shroud. So everything outside of the GPU PCB is actually metal. Now, I don't think that helps in any way in terms of performance, 
But with this kind of flagship models and the you know the ROG line, you're looking for something more or beyond performance. You don't just want the GPU to be a beast in gaming and performance. You also want it to look good and feel good while doing all of that stuff. And that is where I think this ROG GPU really shines. It's meant to be a centerpiece of your PC. It basically completes any setup aesthetically. And it's really for those people that want to have a beastly melt your eye system and don't have that much problem parting with their hard-earned money. <laughs> so finally, for the gaming performance, how does this actually play a game? How does this actually do GPU things? For our testing, I did use my personal system, which is a 7800X 3D, another ROG B650E ITX motherboard, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM at 6000 megahertz. And since this thing won't fit in my ITX NR200P Max case, I did have to do the painful task of transferring all of my PC into a larger case. Actually, the only thing we had that's free to use was the DS900 from Dark Flash, which we pre Previously reviewed. And all gaming testing is done in 1440p and 4K at their ultra maximum settings. We will be indicating whether DLSS or any upscaling technology is on or not. So on to the result. So starting with 1440p, no DLSS. Immediately we can see triple digits for all but the most demanding games out there. At Red Dead Redemption, it averages 149 FPS with 1% 1 lows, 270 for Diablo 4, and 180 FPS for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Where it kind of struggle though is with cyberpunk with the ray tracing psycho setting and i guess at this point which gpu doesn't suffer with cyberpunk turning on dlss for the titles that support it shows massive performance so dlss balance with frame generation we see these titles just going under 200 fps and the 1% lows at triple digits as well. Moving over to 4K, this GPU is no slouch either. Red Dead Redemption 2, 95 FPS. Cyberpunk at 57 FPS. Diablo 4 at 149 FPS. And 137 FPS for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Of course, turning on the LSS takes the 4K performance of this GPU to triple digits as well. Of course, that performance comes at a price, and that is your Miralco bill. In most of these games, in some scenes, we see 313 watts of peak wattage. But as I've said before, the Axial Tech doing its job, maintaining a cool 60 degrees Celsius even at peak gaming at peak demand for the GPU. With synthetic benchmarks at TimeSpy it scores just under 30,000 points with 205 average FPS at graphics test 1 and 176 at graphics test 2. So all in all a beast almost overkill at 1440p and excellent performance as well at 4k. So speaking about that performance, comparing it with the 4080 base version, we can see what we meant when we said that this is a refresh rather than a super upgrade. All across the board, with similar games, similar setups, this is just around 4 to 5% better. Which of course isn't that bad. It's just, if you already have a 4080, you do not have a reason to get this 4080 Super. So in conclusion, what do we think about this card? So this being a flagship card, and I do almost mean that literally, this is super heavy, like it's a ship. <laughs> The systems that this GPU target are those systems that have needs and requirements far beyond just performance. This is for those bonkers dream setups with RGB everywhere. Basically, the PC setups we've all dreamt up when we were kids. And that basically encapsulates what ROG represents. It's the Republic of Gamers. It is ruled by one rule only, and that is to look really good, to feel really premium, to outclass every other component out there, while of course being a beast of a system for cutting edge gaming. So if you're a bit budget conscious, this GPU is clearly not for you. But if you want the best 4080 Super, the highest premium quality, and we haven't even talked about the board power limits here, which allows for a ton of headroom for overclocking. Speaking of overclocking, this is the OC version. This has a switch that allows you to instantly overclock the GPU safely for even more performance. But yeah, if you want the most bonkers 4080 Super out there, and if you can afford it, if your system can handle it, if your system deserves it, like how it looks right here, this ROG Strix Gaming 4080 Super might be for you. Thank you for watching.